every year in the United States alone, 50 million people experience some illness related to the brain. Neurologists and neuroscientists have the daunting task of treating the most complex organ known to medicine. But a few people who have suffered a brain illness choose to treat themselves. Ten years ago, Scott Hagwood from North Carolina, USA, could barely remember his own name after undergoing radioactive treatment for thyroid cancer. They told me that when I would undergo the treatments that I would lose my memory. Books that I read, I couldn't remember one page to the next. It was also difficult to remember names. I couldn't remember the names of the nurses. Um, it was difficult to follow along with television programs. Incredibly, Scott not only recovered from cancer, but now as an American national memory champion, he has one of the best memories in the world. There are 468 playing cards in this stack, where once Scott couldn't remember people's names or books he read. Now he can remember every single card in order, and it takes him less than an hour to do so. Seven of hearts. Ten of diamonds. Four of hearts. Queen of hearts. Take a look at this table. It contains 33 items. Most of us would be hard pressed to just remember what items are on the table, let alone remember them in order. It takes Scott just two minutes to commit every item to memory. Number one would be car keys. Number two would be the statue of the golf man. Number three, coffee cup. Four, sunglasses. The red folder. Nine is a puppy. Number 10 is a golf club. Number 13 is a plate. A roll of duct tape. A spoon. A lens cap. Red leaf. A card. A napkin with a bunny. 32. A pine cone. And 33 is a pen with a green cap. So how did Scott go from not being able to remember anything to performing these photographic memory-like feats? According to Dr. Morali Doraswamy, a psychiatrist and memory specialist at Duke University, North Carolina, the reason's simple. Scott exercises his brain. Scott is a living example of a trained athlete, a trained brain athlete. Memories, both short-term and long-term, are formed and stored in several areas of the brain. Effective memorizing depends on training strong connections between these different areas. But as with physical training, most of us don't bother. You ask a sedentary man to run a five kilometer race, they're going to be puffing and panting by the time they're finished the first three or four laps. Whereas you ask a trained athlete to run a five kilometer race, they're not going to break a sweat. Dr. Dara Swarmi has conducted experiments comparing a normal unfit brain with Scott's trained one. Both were asked to memorize and then recall a series of cards while their brains were being scanned. This is a example of a, a normal control subject's brain. And as you can see, the two regions within the frontal cortex are lighting up and there are fairly large areas that are lighting up. This person's brain is working fairly hard at trying to memorize the information. By comparison, I'm going to show you uh, Scott's picture right now. So the same two uh, regions of the brain that we saw activated in the normal control subject, the frontal cortex on the left side and the right side, show almost no activation in Scott's brain. And so what you're seeing is that the brain circuits are so efficient that they're not lighting up on the functional MRI scan. As Scott proves, it's never too late to start training memory. But what's the secret of Scott's techniques? One of his main methods is visual association with objects that he places in a room. In this case, it's the top 10 best-selling albums of all time. And I would mentally place an eagle which lets me know that the number one selling album of all time is The Eagles, their greatest hits from 1971 to 1975. Number two would be Thriller by Michael Jackson. Number three, Pink Floyd, The Wall. Number four, because this is lead crystal, Led Zeppelin. Such techniques have enabled Scott to become the American national memory champion four times over. All very impressive, but what's the point? Dr. Dora Swarmi believes exercises like this can benefit all of us. The key goal 
of exercise of memory training is to strengthen the very same circuits that are perhaps affected by aging and by diseases such as Alzheimer's so that if you can build a greater reserve capacity early on and in midlife and you can perhaps ward off these diseases. Bug spray, the Beatles, backwards, forwards, or in any order. Anybody can do this, absolutely. It would be great if all of us could uh, take uh, neurobics classes. We're focusing too much on a six-pack abdomen. We should be worrying about building our brain reserve because memory is really our most cherished asset.